we've got many elephants. This is, oh, this is actually quite funny. So the bull we're looking at at the moment is not as old as you can clearly see by just by the ivory as the massive bull, but there's a younger bull standing off in the distance in the dam. And look at his reaction. Look at this. So he's not doing that to try and splash himself. He's trying to act big and strong now because he was chased by the big elephant bull. So I think he's feeling a little bit embarrassed. And he's doing, he's acting like that towards this fellow over here, which is really, really funny. Now, of course, on safari, you will see other vehicles, and that's one of the Cheetah Plains Rangers. That's Mike, just off in the distance, with all his guests. And I have to tell you, how amazing is that? His coffee stop, his tea and coffee, was disturbed by the elephants. Isn't that spectacular? And I'm sure that all of you would be so excited to come out on safari and during your morning tea and coffee, well, to just have an entire herd of elephants and particularly at a watering hole and an elephant bull with such big tusks is a very, very, very special. Now, this little fellow over here is feeling very brave. Uh, I reckon he's only a, between about 18 and 20 years old and the other bull was probably about, I'm just sort of giving ages, he's a little bit bigger, maybe 25 and the big bull could be anywhere. He's in his mid 40s to 50s. He's quite an older, quite an older bull. You can clearly just see by the size and of course his long tusks, massive ears, huge trunk, big feet, everything that goes with a large elephant. But these two are not happy with each other, or at least the one that's now splashing the water around, he's not very happy. Yes, you'll get your turn, be patient. You can't just be the biggest and strongest elephant all in one go. These things take time, youngster. And that's, I think, the biggest problem that elephants have to herd, uh, learn, and particularly the, the, the young elephant bulls, is that they're enormous, they're bigger than any other animal out there, but they're not the top dogs. And it definitely hurts their ego slightly. You, you see it clearly when they get reprimanded. They, you can see they feel embarrassment. They, they feel all these things that I'm sure we as humans feel too, which is really special. But you're very far away splashing around. I'd be more impressed if he walked a bit closer to the other young elephant, but he won't do that because he knows he's had his match met and the big elephant bull could also come and intervene and sort both of the youngsters out at once. I've definitely seen that a couple of times. Oh, you're going in for a swim now. Oh, well now we can see how deep Buffalo's Hook Dam is. There we go. And that's right at the edge, so it's relatively deep. It'll be interesting to see as he moves towards the middle now. Look at him, he's slowly going under. And this is a favorite thing of an elephant to do, is spend their whole time going in the water. He's like a submarine now, head first, bottom in the air. That is a very compromising position to be an elephant. <laughs> Imagine coming around the corner and it's your first time on safari and you just saw an elephant's bottom with its tail in the air, in the water. I think that would be quite surprising. And he's gonna have a swim now. He doesn't care that it's raining. He's saying, I can do whatever I want, and I will do whatever I want. Oh, this is great. What the mo it's the most perfect day. <clears throat> now, Graham, you're wondering if elephants have a valve system in their trunk to stop uh, the water sort of going all the way through. Yes, they do. So elephants, unfortunately, cannot suck up water. Uh, oh, sorry, I've just been distracted. There's also a heron flying around, but we'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, it was fishing, but we, like I said, let's enjoy this elephant. So, so yes, it is. So they can't suck water up right through uh, into their sinuses and into their mouth. They suck it up about 10 liters or so and then squirt it back into their mouth. Now, I'm sure every now and then they accidentally um, sort of pull too hard and uh, get a little bit water water up their nose. We all do that when you're in the swimming pool. I know um, when I don't blow bubbles when I dive into the water, then the water goes straight up my nostrils, and that's never fun. That burning sensation is unpleasant, and I'm sure that happens every now and then with elephants. And now he's cleaning his trunk and his tusks. They were all covered in mud earlier. Are you just giving them a wipe? Hello, beautiful boy. Oh, his friend is coming to join him. Oh, this is great. Now they might have water battles, which is one of the most amazing things to watch when two elephant bulls play fight in the water. Of course, this won't be a real fight at all, but they might be revved up from the pheromones that they're getting from the big elephant bull who isn't must. Come on, boys, push and shove each other. 
clearly straight away you can see the size difference. The elephant that's closest to us is absolutely dominating. Now he's not trying to mate with this other elephant bull. Mounting another male is often um, is a sign of dominance. It's what they'll do after they push and shove each other around. We see it with giraffe, we see it with kudu, we see it with elephants and most of the animals, dogs do it particularly well too. But they're just having a bit of fun they might even live together for the, the next couple of years. It's very common to see that with young elephant bulls joining up with bulls in a similar age. And they might actually just want to learn from the big elephant bull. And that's why they're following him around, saying, teach us, show us the way of life. And he's not interested in doing that. Not at the moment, anyway. Well, this is great. Swimming elephants on a rainy day. I don't think any of us could have guessed that this is what we were going to see this morning. Now, Mr. T, good morning to you. You're wondering if big elephants accidentally uh, kill smaller elephants while playing. Uh, I've never seen that. I, I don't think it's impossible. Elephants are actually quite gentle. However, when a big elephant bull in, is in must, it's almost like his, he forgets all his manners. And they can become a bit boisterous, and that's often why the females aren't so tolerant of the bulls, is because accidentally as he shoves through trying to find the one cow that is in estrus, he could indeed knock over a youngster or unintentionally if he's boxing with another elephant and they're pushing and shoving each other around uh, and we've had it before I've seen elephants accidentally reverse into cars because they're pushing and shoving not even realizing that they're there so they become completely oblivi oblivious to their surroundings and are just focusing on one thing so most certainly I can only imagine that it would not be very pleasant and the cows would not be happy. Even if a little one was just bulldozed over, there would be a lot of trouble. So whether it could get to that, I'm not sure, but I don't think that we can uh, rule it out. But little elephants are pretty clever. I think they know that they just need to keep out of the way. Mom normally ushers them to their side. Sometimes they form protective circles, just putting all the little ones in the middle, sort of uh, just preparing for the chance that something could go wrong. So. They're pretty good at that, elephants. Hey boys, you're having the best time, aren't you? And every now and then you can hear their tusks clashing too, which is such a wonderful sound. Sounds like the ocean, the waves hitting the beach. How are those sounds? Aren't they just so soothing? And it's sightings like this that just make safaris absolutely incredible. We are have well, we have been very fortunate. We've seen many sightings of elephants swimming and youngsters playing. This is something that I wish that I could see every single day. I don't know why people don't come on safaris when they're feeling sad. Because when you come out and you are feeling a little bit depressed or maybe just you're just having a miserable day, nothing's going your way. I can promise you right now you'll sit here. Oh, there goes the heron I was talking about. It's just about to fly away. There's a big grey heron. It's changing position. Oh, and disappeared. Uh, probably because the elephants were going straight towards where it's sitting. But if you were very upset, I can tell you right now, sitting in this sighting would just turn your entire world the right way around again if it was tipped upside down. It is so special to sit and watch something like this. Or even just those two little elephants were sorting as they were pushing and shoving each other around. It's almost like we become oblivious and forget everything else around us and just absorb the beautiful nature. It's amazing how nature can make one very, very happy. Natural endorphins. Now this is what I used to see in the Great Zambezi River almost every single day. As the elephants would they'd swim across normally first thing in the morning, especially in winter, when they were, oh, the, the heron is gonna fly straight over the top. Whee, land on the back of the elephant. Nice work, Darby. Hey, how's that camera skills? Mm. From Dangerous Dave. Very nice. I think this bird is 
hoping that if it feeds that side of the elephants, maybe there are going to be some fish or frogs with those elephants tussling. Uh, maybe it will sort of push them towards the shallower waters. They prefer to walk around in shallow waters, not such deep water. How great is this? An all-in-one sighting. I don't want to leave. I just want to stay here forever, David. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes, as I was saying, the elephants would swim across to the islands first thing in the morning uh, to feed on all the lovely untouched long grass. And then just before the sun set, they'd all come back again. And it's almost like they could not resist playing all sorts of games, tug of war, I don't know, snorkeler, snorkeler, whatever game that might be, submarine, submarine. And they'd perform for an hour, lots of them, young ones would usher, would panic a little bit actually crossing the deep channel so they'd get across pretty quickly and then they'd play in the shallows and the bigger bulls that could stand would have the best time. But look at him now, sticking his tusks into the sand bank, loosening it up. Maybe he's going to try and take some and put it over his body. How cool is this? So there we go, now you know why the walls are like that, it's because of the elephants. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're contributing to the erosion, but of course this is natural erosion now, and I don't think you're going to climb up there. He's having the best time of his life. Look at him. He's very relaxed. What are you doing? I'm just, uh, just going to take a nap quickly, just a quick nap here against the wall, and I'm sure that feels nice when an elephant is able to use a bank like that to rest up on. Uh, it makes it a lot easier for them to get up. Because getting up when you lay down on the flat ground can be quite difficult for an enormous elephant. Little ones find it easier. They sort of do this this rocking motion, which is hysterical. But he's just, just taking it easy. What is the day today? David, do you Monday. know? Monday. He's having a great Monday. I think this is how every Monday should start. Elephants swimming in the water and just being absolutely ridiculous. Such hooligans. One on the right has seen his opportunity. Now he's got, ah, you're sitting down. Now I'm bigger than you for the first time. I'm going to push you while you were weak. <laughs> look, look, now he's struggling to get up. <laughs> look, he's pushing him quite hard too. You better be careful because as soon as he gets up again, just remember, you're going to be in trouble. Oh, very cheeky. This is absolutely spectacular. I'm sure that you're all taking the most amazing screenshots. And just a reminder, in case you have just joined us, you are watching Safari Live and you are able to interact with us. This is a live and interactive safari. So what you're seeing now is happening right now in South Africa in Juma Private Game Reserve in the Sabi Sand, the Greater Kruger National Park. So hashtag Safari Live on Twitter if you do have any questions. And remember to post all your screenshots. We absolutely love to see them especially of elephants behaving like this in the water. Oh, this is special. And the rain has let up. Just a slight drizzle now. The birds are starting to sing again. They've obviously come out of hiding now. What a perfect Monday. I don't think it could get any better than this. And the rest of the herd has actually moved on, including the big elephant bull that was hanging around, keeping an eye on these two. I think that they he's realized that, right, they got my point. I told them to leave me alone and my family alone, and that's exactly what they've done. So there's no point to stick around. Oh, don't get too excited, elephant bull. That's, that's a boy. <laughs> pushing him under. That's unfair. I remember, to, you know, when you play with your siblings in the pool, and because I'm older than my younger brother, he always used to want to sit on my shoulders, and then we'd play games, and then he would stand on my shoulders and jump off and dive into the pool. And it can actually be quite dangerous. And you, you can definitely see elephants panicking uh, when they're in the water, especially when they're smaller and not much of their body is sticking out. I'm sure, like I used to panic every now and then trying to throw my brother off of my shoulders because I couldn't breathe and I couldn't reach the top of the water. I'm sure the same thing happens with elephants, especially when the little ones, when a whole herd is in here. That can easily happen. <laughs> no, 
Now, Lara, are you wondering if they could be brothers? I'm not sure. I don't think so. And just because uh, the, the male structure within a herd is so loose, they really don't have a have a role other than just popping through every now and then when they're in must searching for estrus cows. So I think that they're just two young bulls that have perhaps been spending, I don't know how much time together. They could have been living together for a few years, maybe a few months. Maybe they've just met today. It's almost impossible for us to know. But remember, all elephants are sociable. They used to live in breeding herds at one point. So to be kicked out of a herd and to go out on your own is quite tough and they're super intelligent so i think that they enjoy the company and playing around like this as do boys do rate their boys are always wrestling you if i look at my siblings and my my younger brother and what him and his friends used to do always tackling each other playing sport and i suppose that this is the equivalent they're bonding now However, once they get older and to the size of the enormous tusker that we were privileged to see just a moment ago, they won't really be too bothered about doing too much socializing. I think it's just now to entertain them as they're building up all of this testosterone and they can't really do anything with it. So the next best thing, of course, is well to push and shove and play with another elephant to try and get out some of your frustrations and all your built up energy. <laughs> I think the little one has just given up and said, fine, you win. You are more dominant than I am. I'm just going to sit here and wait until you jump off of me. Now, Pritam, you're wondering if elephants ever break their tusks while playing or fighting. Most certainly. That's actually very common. And quite sad to see when you see an enormous tusker and he's got one very long tusk and the other one is chipped off. We had a sighting the other day, a massive elephant bull, and both of his tusks had actually broken off. You could still see some of them. Uh, so yeah, so when they do fight properly, and that's when a, an injury like that will happen, though it won't really hurt them too much unless they chip it where the nerve endings are, but that's, um, that's quite difficult because they're quite far up. Uh, but just a normal break will be fine. It won't bother them too much. And I'd love to hear or witness uh, tusks being broken during a massive uh, sort of disagreement with two elephant bulls. That must be really, really, really spectacular. But I think these two are getting ready to finish up playing. They keep coming closer and closer to the bank, which will be interesting to watch. We watched one elephant walk down that very steep bank, but it'll be great to see how easily they are able to, well, come straight up the same place that they went down and there's if you Darby if you look just to the left of those in the distance coming down towards the dam yes sort of where your screen will go up a bit more there's an entire herd there we go just to the top left corner there's a whole herd of elephants some more I don't know if they're cows it's a bit difficult to tell I don't know if there are some more young bulls but I suspect that they're going to walk the same route that the other herd has just done and maybe they'll come down and join these two which will be something to look forward to. See, they're, they're not bossing each other around as much now. They've definitely settled down a bit. Now, Tammy, you're wondering if elephants actually swim like doggy paddle. They do. They, kick, they sort of kick their legs like they're treading water. They're incredible swimmers. And they just pop their trunks up to breathe, a little snorkel. They are really, really good because there's some parts in the Zambezi River that it's, it's so deep, must be a couple of meters, more so, uh, more deeper than well, the height of an elephant. Uh, so I'm sure there's points where they can't touch the bottom anymore. Um, that's really special. And then, of course, the little elephants, you know, just crossing in a couple of meters of water, they have to swim. They, they don't sink down to the bottom like a hippo does and walk along the, the floor. Uh, they're actually swimming. They're very, they're quite buoyant and they love it as you can see. It's their favorite thing to do. They're the happiest elephants and I say it all the time but it's, it's honestly, it's the truth. The happiest elephants you'll ever see are the ones that are swimming around in water. No, now they've got another burst of energy again and now the sun is just starting to poke through too. You can see how it illuminates that uh, sort of makes a nice glossy shine on the back of the elephants. That's also my other favorite thing, is the color that you get when an elephant has completely submerged itself. It's a very, very dark, rich, almost sometimes chocolate brown in them. Well, that's the colors that I see. But look at that. How beautiful is that? I think they've picked a great day to go swimming. 
Now, Starlight, you've asked how long can they hold their breath underwater. I don't think for very long at all, and it's not necessary for an elephant to really hold its breath because they are blessed with those uh, long appendages, uh, well, otherwise known as their trunks, that they also use to splash water at each other. And they're able to, of course, stretch that up and gasp for air if they need to, if perhaps they are being held underwater by another elephant which is what we've been seeing happening here and just put his trunk out and breathe and breathe like that so there's no need for them to hold their breaths I, but I wouldn't even have a clue um, if they needed to hold their breaths how long it would be are you trying to grab his tail with your trunk that's a bit cheeky that's very cheeky I'm so glad we didn't go to Cheetah Plains this morning just purely because we would never have popped around to, uh, to the Buffalsook Dam and at that specific time this has worked out in our favor today, so thank you for all the dark, rainy clouds that prevented us from heading that way, because that's the reason why we didn't go. It was just because it was just too much rain, and you know what it's like. When we have a lot of rain, it becomes almost impossible uh, to film anything because the equipment tends to get a bit wet. So that was that's just worked perfectly, and that's, that's what's so fun about the safaris, is that some days everything just works in your favor, other days it's a bit slow, but we all take chances, and well, it's nature too. Nature has its good days, nature has its bad days, and we're just so happy that we're able to bring, of course, this footage to all of you that are watching. David, what do you think of the sighting? Yeah, it's awesome. Pretty good, Ham. Hey? Pretty good. And I hope that these dams stay nice and full. You can definitely see the rain we had topped up Buffalo's Hook Dam, hey David? Remember, it dried out quite a bit. Mm. The water level had dropped a significant amount, but with the rain over the last two days, it's filled up perfectly and it's nice and full. But sadly, there is a third vehicle arriving in the sighting. Now, unfortunately, we cannot have three vehicles in a sighting with elephants. We normally limited to two, so I think we've had a great time. We'll give the other guides an opportunity to have a view of this too we've been here this is pretty special though and hopefully we'll be able to see something like that again so what we're going to do is we're going to make some room now and we're going to go back across to byron who is still very cozy and in his tent and i wonder if he's made himself a cup of coffee <laughs> 